Now, before I continue, can I have a reaction thumbs up whoever is here right now? Oh, there are more and more uh, people joining us uh, right now. They're all starting to log in. Uh, can we have a reaction thumbs up to make sure that you can hear me? Thank you very much, Lashia. Thank you, Junre, Charlene, and so on and so forth. They're all coming up. And Luke, all right? And um, thanks a lot, Dian. Appreciate it, right? So what I'm going to do is, as I told you, a lot of students, when they go to... Um, uh, when they go to uh, acid-base salts, right? Acids, they are quite okay because they're not much. They are not scoring, but they can pass. When they go to base, then they lack some strategy. It becomes a bit confusing. Then they start to lose some marks. When you get to salts, it's worse because it's a combination of acids, bases, and uh, concepts and strategies in salts. And a lot of them do not have strategies or salts. They uh, just go by memorizing whatever they can find in their school notes or textbook. And that doesn't work. That doesn't work, all right? Uh, because the question always change and then uh, they realize they cannot apply anymore. All right. So I just want to do a very quick one before we go into the questions. All right. So uh, let's finish up uh, very quickly here. It's just a short call today, a short uh, Zoom uh, meeting up here. All right. So uh, what we have is, as you know, in the preparation of sort, uh, it's a flow chart. So I just want to remind you, you're always given the name or formula of the sort. All right. So from there, you need to ask yourself the first question. You ask yourself the first question, all right? And you ask yourself, uh, uh, is a salt soluble in water? Salt soluble in water, all right? So uh, just a very rough one. Uh, just here, is salt soluble in water? Then obviously your answer is yes and no. So uh, the, if it's not, then you always go through ionic precipitation or some schools just say precipitation method is the same. All right, why ionic precipitation in case you wonder uh, again? Ionic precipitation because it involves ions. And in fact, uh, if you still remember how we do precipitation, it's really when the two ions, the Romeo and the Juliet, the cations and the anions come together, they get married, all right, so-called, and they become a solid state, uh, insoluble salt, right? So that is your precipitation method. So can I box it up? This is one method called precipitation. Uh, this is when the state symbol is solid, right? So I can write it here, it's for solid state. Now, precipitation, very easy. Our strategy has always been this. Uh, is A equals A plus B equals, all right? Uh, and then C, I put the S3 there because this is our target sort. I need to be solid state as you can see here. And remember D must be A equals, all right? And uh, everyone should also know that there are two strategies. Uh, the first strategy is that you use a salt solution, all right? And also use a salt solution for B. So use salt and salt. You're going to get you your product, all right? So you're going to get your uh, target insoluble salt. Okay, and then obviously this, I told you, you must prove it, all right, is a salt solution. So when B is a salt, the other side will also be a salt. I mentioned before, right? If B is a salt, all right, uh, D is a salt. Solution, solution, solution. Then alternatively, you can use um, one of the reactants, let's call it B, to be acid solution. All right, to be acid solution. So all this, it will be recorded or towards the end, I give you 10 seconds, take a screenshot or take a snapshot using your phone, okay? So uh, you get your insoluble salt. So if, you, I, if I'm in McDonald's or Starbucks um, and then I sit down, once again, a breaker is over. If there's a student out of nowhere, say, hey, Mr. Chua, are you the 10 year series? Uh, I'm not a student, but can I ask you a question? Obviously, I say, can, all right? I don't mind. I say, do you have a pen and a paper? They don't have, I say, okay, go to the counter, get a napkin, all right? The tissue or, or the napkin, we call it from the counter and then uh, uh, get borrow a, 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 a pen, all right? Uh, and then come over. Then I will draw this out and I'll explain to them, this is what we should do, okay? So that will take us about five minutes, okay? So uh, what I have is this must then be acid, all right? Once again, uh, if your, your, your B is an acid, my D will also be an acid, okay? And you can easily prove it by writing it out. Okay, just go all the way and you know what is happening. Uh, the problem is a lot of people, even though they know about this strategy, all right, they don't look at C and D. They just A, B, okay, equals, equals, then they, they mix it up. And then uh, the thing is, you will not get insoluble salt at times based on the question, the MCQ question especially, which I think I showed everyone before one or two questions on this, all right? So if you are not uh, very clear about what I'm talking about, go look at the class exercise. We did something like this before, okay? Now, so we go to the other side, then uh, obviously there are some sorts or most sorts are soluble in water, we say yes. And if it's yes, there are two methods over here. It all depends whether they are soluble or rather whether they are group one or spa sorts. All right. So 
This is where we ask ourselves question two. So this is my strategy. You can't find this in textbook and it always work. All right, it's always work. So use it, uh, use it well, <laughs> use it well. So question two, we'll ask ourselves, uh, is, the, is it a spa, sodium, potassium, ammonium, uh, or uh, any other group one sort? All right, because if it is, then uh, we will go and use this strategy. If the answer is yes over there, we'll use titration method. If the answer is no, then this is a long one. And a lot of time people don't like to uh, memorize and remember the actual name, right? It's called acid react with excess insoluble substance. There are many kinds of substance. There are three of them can consider, but not every time you can use, which later in the question realize we're going to talk about it again, okay? So if you can show this to your younger sibling or to your friends, you can teach them this way, right? Um, or you can teach your parents. Go tell them, oh, this is what I learned from Mr. Chua. Okay, then you give them a few examples. Good to go, all right? Then I tell your parents, learn from you. Next time for chemistry, in case they forgot what they learned long, long time ago. Uh, so titration is what? Uh, but the way this method, you realize you no matter what, you need an acid. All right, so equals. Uh. By the way, you, you're not supposed to write state symbols behind an uh, English name, a chemical name. This one is when we are talking about strategy that we do so. We don't write so much, okay? Because state symbols can only be behind a uh, ions or a chemical formula it cannot be a uh, English name or English word, or we, we call it chemical name. Is it okay? Cannot lah. So again, this strategy, so why not? We just want to keep it short, straight to the point, and then we apply, okay? Uh, so this is what? We must use an acid and alkali, or uh, we can use an acid with a soluble carbonate solution. There are some carbonate that dissolve in water, the spa carbonate and group one carbonate, is in the table of soluble of salts. I have discussed that before. So, uh, soluble carbonate solution. So, it's A equals. All right. So, uh, this method, if you remember the procedure, there is something that you always use. It's called the buret. All right. This method, you must use the buret. The other method, you don't use a buret. It's not, ne it's not necessary to use a buret. You don't have to. Okay. So, this method characterized by buret. So, every time I see a buret in a, a sub preparation question, I saw the word buret, right? I tell myself, huh, this must be titration method. Then you look for uh, acid, alkali, this acid with soluble carbonate, once again. Okay, these are the terms you look for. Now, what about this on, on this side? We mentioned before there are three mini methods. Three mini methods. So you can use an acid. No, you can. You must use an acid. Right? The, the, uh, the method name already tell you you must use an acid. So what do you need from here? Or what can you have here? It can be a moderately reactive metal, right? We are good enough, we have done enough to tell ourselves metals are not just metal. Metals, there are uh, very reactive metal, moderately reactive, unreactive metals, right? So we use moderately uh, reactive metal, which doesn't dissolve water. Too reactive, it will explode. Can you make the salt by right? You can, but in the process of making a salt, there's an explosion. Ah, then die there, all right? Uh, that is not worth it. So we don't use this method to make a salt that in, uh, consists of a reactive metal, say sodium, potassium, okay, and calcium. These are top three, you don't use it, right? Too reactive. Also, we cannot use uh, unreactive metal, the last three in the metal reactivity series, which is copper, silver, gold, or anything they tell you is below the hydrogen in the reactivity series, you don't use them, okay? You don't use this method. Then uh, what else? Then besides these, we can use... Uh, uh, insoluble base, your metal oxide, okay? And the insoluble base, if you look at it, uh, we learned base already, right? So this must be either your basic oxide, the insoluble ones. Remember, uh, basic oxide is soluble, insoluble. So I taught all of you acid, base, and salt. So you have my notes, you have my strategy, you have my videos. You know what I'm talking about, okay? People from outside, they will not know what we're talking about. They won't know because they are not uh, what's the word to you? I almost say fundamentally sound. That's wrong. They are, they are, their concepts are not fundamentally strong. So they will, not know, they will know what you're talking about. There has more question mark in their mind. Okay? So uh, it is either basic oxide or you can use an amphoteric oxide. Amphoteric oxide. Okay? Again, it's insoluble in water. This one is automatic. Uh, all three of them, we learned zinc, aluminum, lead.